Hi everyone, I'm Megan Carter, media specialist for NASA's Space Launch System rocket. As teams at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida are busy getting ready for the first crewed Artemis mission, work continues all over the United States to prepare for future missions as well. One of those locations is right here in beautiful Promontory, Utah at the Northrop Grumman facility where I'm coming to you live today. Our partners here at Northrop Grumman have been working to develop a more efficient, lower cost commercial solution for the boosters for the Space Launch System. As you can see, it is a beautiful day here in Utah, and we are actually just a few minutes away from a hot fire for the demonstration motor one test. The booster motor for today's hot fire is actually locked up on that hill in the test stand right behind me, and it's just about ready to be fired up. The boosters for NASA's moon rocket are the largest, most powerful that have ever been built for flight. And there are two boosters that flank either side of the rocket and together produce millions of pounds of thrust at launch. Today, we will get to witness the power of just one of those boosters. But before we kick this off, we're actually gonna turn it over to Alyssa Lee in Huntsville, Alabama at Marshall Space Flight Center to learn a little bit more about what we're gonna be seeing today. I am very excited to be here at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center with a resident SLS and booster expert. Joining me today is Julia Cotabande, the Deputy Manager for the SLS Booster Element Office. Thank you so much for joining me, Julia. We are less than a year away from the launch of Artemis II, which will see SLS and NASA's Orion spacecraft on the first crewed mission for the Artemis campaign. So would you be able to give us a little quick update on the progress for Artemis II? Yeah, so Artemis II is currently being stacked at the Vehicle Assembly Building at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. So the twin solid rocket boosters have already been stacked, and the core stage with its four RS-25 engines has also been mated to the boosters. We have the Ryan stage adapter here at Marshall Space Flight Center ready to ship and be integrated with the vehicle as well. Orion is currently being processed at KSC in the multi-payload processing facility. It's getting its propellants, um, its consumables, and the launch abort system, and once that's complete, it'll be ready to be delivered to the vehicle assembly building to be stacked onto the SLS rocket as well. Wow, that's so exciting. It's gonna be here before we know it. <laughs> so as your role as a deputy manager for the booster office here, what does your job entail? And with that, what are you most looking forward to out of the today's test? So yeah, as deputy booster manager in the booster element office, we are part of the SLS program office. And uh, my responsibility is to advise and to assist the booster manager in things like programmatic and fiscal and technical planning, procurements, contract actions, um, ddt and &E, design development, test and evaluation, um, as well as production and operations of the booster. And this is gonna include all of the support equipment as well as the facilities that are needed. Um, what I'm most looking forward to today kind of goes a little bit back into history. When we started the SLS program, in order to save cost and schedule, we implemented the shuttle's proven heritage hardware into our design. But it, this is being depleted as the Artemis program progresses and it's just not practical to restart the manufacturing um, from that 1970s era. So for the last several years, we've been developing what we call the Booster Obsolescence and Life Extension, or BOLE. And so the BOLE is actually implementing um, new manufacturing processes and new materials from domestic sources. And so this test today is gonna be the first full duration, full scale test of the Bole motor, which we're calling DM1 or demonstration motor one. Uh, so how does that tie into the goals and objectives of the test today? Uh, so um, our goals today are to take a look at the performance um, of the Bole motor. Um, we are going to be looking at things like the ballistics performance, um, so the pressure and the thrust versus time, um, the burn rate of the motor, um, the pressure drop, the um, ignition characteristics. We're going to be taking a look at the um, performance of the internal insulation of the motor, um, in the case acreage and dome areas. Um, we also have a um, new carbon fiber composite case, which will be taking a look at its performance uh, during the test, as well as the joints and um, the seals. 
uh, we'll be taking a look at our nozzle ablative performance um, and the electronic thrust vector controls vectoring of that nozzle. And uh, one of the other things that we're um, demonstrating with the, the Bole DM1 today is that we're able to produce that next generation um, motor that is high performing, um, addresses our obsolescence issues, and does it more efficiently and um, at a reduced cost, which we are realizing a 25% reduction in cost. Um, but going forward, um, any SLS booster or commercial solid rocket booster is going to need this next generation design um, because of the obsolete obsolescence issues. Great. Thank you, Julia. That was very enlightening and I am so pumped to see this thing fire. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, I think it's time we check back with Megan in Utah to see if we are getting close to this big event. Thanks, Alyssa. We are now less than five minutes away from the hot fire. We're gonna take a quick break and I'm gonna get into position to watch. When we come back after the test, we'll actually be answering a few of your questions that were submitted in the chat. But for now, let's get ready to fire this booster up. Just before the test, you are gonna hear a countdown from the test conductor, followed by the two minute booster firing. Enjoy, we'll see you back here shortly. This is the test conductor, report system status. Support systems are go for static test. Low speed systems are go. High, high speed systems are go. Ultrasonic data systems are go. TVC systems are go. High speed video systems are go. Motor temperatures are go. We are go for Bole DM1 static test. T minus three minutes. Low speed data operators begin recording. High speed data operators at T minus 70 seconds begin recording and report at that time. Roger. All low speed data systems are recording. Roger. T minus two minutes. T minus 90 seconds. T minus 80 seconds. Test control coordinator, stand by to commit the motor. Standing by. T minus 70 seconds. Commit the motor. The motor is committed. T minus 60 seconds. All high speed systems are recording. Roger. Ultrasonic data system is recording. Roger. T minus 50 seconds. TVC is go for static test. Roger. T minus 40 seconds. T minus 30 seconds. T 
T-minus 20 seconds. T-minus 15 seconds. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, fire. T plus 5 seconds. T plus 10 seconds. T plus 20 seconds. T plus 30 seconds. T plus 40 seconds. T plus 50 seconds. T plus 60 seconds. T plus 70 seconds. T plus 80 seconds. Central support system operator, enable the deluge, CO2, and quench tool controls. Enabled. T plus 90 seconds. Open the accumulator enable valve. Uh, accumulator is enabled. T plus 100 seconds. Activate aft deluge. Activated. Whoa. T plus 110 <gasps> seconds. Activate forward deluge. Activated. T plus 120 seconds. Activate head end CO2. Activated. Activate twinch, quench tool forward com command forward. Activate aft CO2. Activated. TVC power is disabled. Roger. T plus 160 seconds. T plus 170 seconds. High speed data operators, stand by.